first thing a minister must not possess is spiritual blindness this thing you carry you can produce more than i can the inner man must desire the outer man must be. Welcome to the moment of live studio review, Minister's Conference, Minister Without Blemish, October edition 2018, happening live at the International Worship Center, Omega Fire Ministries, Auchi at the State, Nigeria. Thanks for staying tuned. Welcome to the moment of... Hello, welcome again. This is the last session of the studio review of session from, of the... Minister Without Blemish, October edition in 2018. I can tell you it's been an historic event so far. The Minister Without Blemish, this time around with God's servant, the Restoration Apostle, Professor Johnson Suleiman, has been an outstanding one. Lives have been changed. Ministers, you know, have come from different parts of the world, converge right here at the international headquarters. Their lives have transformed. I can tell you we could feel it, we can touch it. The presence of God was literally available. You can touch it if you want to. Testimonies abound. Everyone has been transformed. And that's why tonight we're going to be having another review of the last session tonight. And I'm not alone in the studio. I have Ruth right here with me. How are you doing, Ruth? <laughs> Very well, thank you so much, sir. Yeah, yeah um, it's the last session, the grand finale of Ministers Without Blemish Review in Celebration TV Studio, situated at Aouchi, the state in Nigeria. Now, like he rightly said, it's been amazing, it's been mind blowing, it's been awesome in God's presence, and that is why we are here just to tell you how it all happened for us and with some presses who are in the studio but who will be joining us just after the break so don't go anywhere stay with us we're coming back shortly the first thing a minister must not possess is spiritual blindness this thing you carry you can produce more than i can the inner man must desire the outer man must be. Welcome to the moment of live studio review, Minister's Conference, Minister Without Blemish, October edition 2018, happening live at the International Worship Center, Omega Fire Ministries, Auchi at the State, Nigeria. Thanks for staying tuned. Welcome. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying connected. Now, before the break, I said we have some presents who were in attendance that are going to be sharing their own experiences and what it was all about for Ministers Without Blemish, October edition of the year 2018. And we have Apostle Teneve Patrick and also Apostle Wealth. We are all in the studio today. Welcome so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We're here tonight. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, Apostle Teneve, um, it's been a wonderful session, you know. Um, from the very beginning to the end <coughs> um, so far the Bible says that the end of the thing is better than the beginning thereof yeah. would you say that indeed this ministers conference has made that scripture a reality uh, with what we've uh, experienced so far it is the word being made flesh mm -hmm. and dwelling among men mm -hmm. we saw the word of God in practical mm -hmm. 
and um, sincerely without mm. uh, doubt, without restriction of words, that scripture has been manifested Praise in God. full capacity. Praise God. And I thank God with what God has done. I thank God I was a part of this year edition and trusting God for more. So for how long have you been following now? Because it's been on for several years now. By annual program, actually that of March edition and also the October that just ended. So for how long have you been attending? I think the first minister's that blemish was in 2012. Okay. At a Y Road at Dua Wapinin City. Yeah. I just did that. I was mm. there. I was privileged to be there. And from that 2012 up mm. until now, it's actually a, a ministerial character molding process mm -hmm. and uh, positioning ministers, redirecting them on the right track in the ministry for fit to fulfill the mm -hmm. assignment God is giving to them. Mm -hmm. And um, from that year up until now, it's been from one level of glory to another. It's been awesome. Mm -hmm. It's been awesome. Okay, so Apostle Wells, you're not talking to us. So, yeah. for how long have you been following ministers without blemish now? Mm -hmm. And how has been your experience so far? Okay, uh, uh, my first attendance was in, in March this year. Oh, it was in March this year, but uh, it was my first experience <coughs> watching Papa live oh. ministering. And uh, I prayed it wouldn't come to an end. Mm -hmm. uh, but it came to an end, <laughs> so I was That's expecting. I was expecting the October edition, so and I had to rush down from my base, and um, it, it's it's awesome, you know, being with Papa on on, on set. And then um, uh, one of the things I found out is that the, the tangibility of the of the Word of God, mm -hmm. you know, it was real. Mm -hmm. So you can feel, you can feel, just like you said, mm -hmm. you can you can feel the Word of God, mm -hmm. you know, come alive. Right. So so that's it. Okay, so um, so far, so good. From the beginning of the uh, minister's conference on Tuesday morning, right mm -hmm. now, the, the last session is ongoing, just about to close. Mm -hmm. Would you say, indeed, it has been from glory to glory? Because, you know, why I'm asking that question. When an event peaks from the very beginning, yes. what do you think will happen at the end? I mean, how do you, when, you, when, you, when you are already getting to the peak of the event, when the event is beginning, would you say that indeed this event has been from glory to glory? If I, let me tell you without missing words, mm. um, Papa, just like I always say, Papa is a dispensation. Mm. You cannot be with him without without being transformed. Mm. Uh, the life of a of a Christian mm. ought to be from glory to glory, from mm. grace to grace. Mm. Now, Papa is a remarkable in, in a personality mm. when it comes to the Word of God. Mm. So his speeches are, are, are so real mm. that uh, you, you can't you can't you can't leave the presence, you know, you know of of God. In fact, you can't leave him without without mm. an impact. Mm -hmm. So I believe that all were impacted. I personally. I was impacted, mm. you know, yes, I was impacted, yeah. and I know uh, that, you know, as I go back to my base in Italy, mm. I know I, I'm going to, I'm going to make a mark. Well, Amen. Okay. So, talk mark. about the Amen. theme of the yes. conference, that yes. it has just been won throughout the years, that's a minister without blemish. Yes. Now, let's talk about it. Is it, is there this possibility of having a minister without blemish indeed? Uh, we won't say they are ministers without blemish, mm -hmm. but like uh, the Bible would say, we're striving towards perfection. Mm -hmm. But uh, trying to make the best out of what we have is uh, what it has been all about. And despite the errors in the ministerial terrain these mm -hmm. days and several happening, trying to raise a generation with integrity mm, mm. and um, a right spirit mm. uh, propagating the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ like I said repositioning men mm. for the assignment if you observe every teaching that has been coming from the altar from uh, through the Apostle yes, uh, by the Apostle is being from it's been centered around the life of the minister mm, mm. and the ministry of the minister mm. trying to make us understand that it is the life of the minister mm. that actually determines what happens yeah. with the ministry right. of the minister that's right so so and these are uh, truths these are actually truths that we scarcely hear 
from the altar, from the pulpits mm. these days. Mm. But the apostle going into them, going into scriptures and bringing them into reality and making us understand that this is how a minister should live. That is actually trying to mold lives and mm, positioning them to live a life. Okay. In so the in ministry the without blemish. We can say that ministry without blemish is a vision the apostle, the resurrection apostle is running with. Mm -hmm. We can put it that way. Sure. Yeah, and then sure. we can yeah. say, indeed, with what you've just said now. to follow him to I mean that he was God has sent him to Jericho and Elijah said I am going to Jericho I mean would you ever permit me to use that yes. one would you ever have if you have studied that scripture permit me would you ever have seen from the apostle perspective I mean the dimension with which led us to the fact that he uh, uh, was saying that you know before you can get to Jericho you have to cross Jordan and you know Jordan represents certain things what do you make of the dimensions of revelation that uh, you know that we experience on that day okay one thing about about uh, um, what was that day you know is this um, followership in ministry is mm. very important mm. and, and then Papa was trying to make it clear that uh, if you have to arrive mm. at Jericho you, you have to be a person that have that spirit of followership mm. now if you watch the life of elisha mm. and how he followed uh, uh, elijah mm. you know it was it was a life of uh, continuous you know followership mm. not just follow him to the one thing that you know is it, going on well and then after a while you know you know chickens out and then comes back again yes, it was continuous mm. and then when a minister is ready to make a change in life and you are continual just like um when Mama taught on on uh, the last mass standing, last mass standing yeah. okay, you know the last mass standing is there, you know you have to keep it up. Mm. You know you don't have to you don't have to chicken out. You don't have to you don't have to give way. Mm. You have to be continuous. Yeah. You have to be consistent, mm. Mm. continually. Absolutely, you understand? Okay, I mean uh, she gave us in a, a word you know from Daniel. Mm. Mm. He said that Daniel worshiped his God continually. Mm. Mm. So he said if you have to remain, you have to be continuous. So. That revelation of uh, you know uh, Elijah following uh, Elijah, you know, is a thing that we have to you know embrace mm. as ministers. Mm. Mm. If we have really to be a minister, a minister without blemish, then we really have to stand up to that task because ministry is a thing that requires you know consistency mm. right. and time. Thank mm. you so much. Right. So we're going right. to continue on that when okay. we we'll come back for the break. So just stay connected with the back shortly. Okay. The first thing a minister must not possess is spiritual blindness. This thing you carry, you can produce more than I can. The inner man must desire, the outer man must be. A minister must not possess his spiritual blindness. This thing you carry, you can produce more than I can. The inner man must desire, the outer man must be.
seen a minister must not possess his spiritual blindness this thing you carry you can produce more than i can the inner man must desire the outer man must be a minister must not possess his spiritual blindness this thing you carry you can produce more than i can the inner man must desire the outer man must be. a minister must not possess his spiritual blindness this thing you carry you can produce more than i can the inner man must desire the outer man must be. a minister must not possess his spiritual blindness this thing you carry you can produce more than i can the inner man must desire the outer man must be. Welcome to the moment of live studio review ministers conference minister without blemish october edition 2018 happening live at the international worship center omega fire ministries out here the state nigeria thanks for staying tuned yeah welcome back um welcome back i believe you're enjoying the show tonight um we have a live correspondent waiting at the international uh, headquarters at the auditorium right there. I want to give you, I want to connect you to the feel of the power of God right there at the, you know, auditorium. Uh, I believe um, Peter Eze is standing by right there, you know. So we wanted to see what's going on right now. Peter, are you doing? What's happening at the auditorium there? Is Peter there? Is he ready? So we, we apologize for that uh, bad audio. We have um, some technical issues there. But we're going to continue right yeah. in the studio. Uh, Ruth, yeah, what do you have for... Before the break, we're actually talking on Elijah, Elijah and then the Jericho and Apostle. We have already mm. shared some of his um, facts about it. And then Apostle Tenebe wants to continue from there. Yeah, you, you observed that during the meeting, while uh, 
the apostle was speaking up uh, uh, speaking on the topic hunger for for all change for all change. change yeah while he was on that topic he made reference to the walls of jericho mm. and also he said now jericho was supposed to be the access point to the promised land mm. uh, for the children of israel and he said for you to access jericho you must first go through the gates mm. you must first go through the gates mm. and for you to assess the gates you must go through jordan mm. and that was the same jordan elijah parted mm. for elijah to assess his takeoff point mm. he had to part jordan now they went through jordan they went through jordan uh, uh, after crossing the red sea and assessing the walls of jericho and he made references to the size mm. of the, of the wall of jericho, of jericho. You can imagine yeah. the thickness of that wall that it was as it was as wide as 16 chariots yeah running through the wall simultaneously mm. and referring to the gates of the of, of the city that um the females mm. uh, like rehab mm, the adults, the adults, yeah. actually lived on the gates mm. uh, on not at mm on the gates mm. and you know when you are on something you actually practically you practically get the visibility of everything mm. that assess the gates mm. and the, the children of israel needed to conquer to conquer jericho before they could assess mm. now in in other words if our soldiers cannot conquer them mm. our women mm. should be able to conquer them mm. i don't even understand yeah. so, Papana went to uh, made a reference to the death of King Saul mm. and said, When David heard about it, mm. David said, Say Do not. I say it not mm. in, in, uh, in, to them in, in God, in God, mm. uh, say it not in God, tell it not to the daughters, daughters of the, the Philistines. Mm. Now, what 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 Papa trying to say, Goliath was from God, and like he interpreted, he interpreted it, he explained it, and I, as while Papa was dwelling on that scripture, I turned to the person beside me and I said, "I don't know Bible," <laughs> mm. because we've seen that scriptures several times, mm. and we just see it as a normal scriptures. Mm. And so I've heard so many preachers preach from there, and they just use it as a reference. Mm. But you can imagine the depth of mm. revelation that mm. the apostle brought out from that particular scripture. Mm. That okay, when David said, "Tell it not, tell it not in God." Tell it, say it not, uh, uh, tell it not in, tell it not in God. Say it not to the daughters of the Philistines. Mm. What uh, David was trying to say is, if you tell it in God, Goliath is from God. Mm. The uh, uh, God uh, happens to be the capital of the Philistines. Yes, the uh, the Philistines. No. Now the Philistines army would now understand the weakness of Israel. Of Israel. Mm. They will see the the, the loophole mm. and they will get to understand how to invade Israel. And to conquer them, knowing mm. that the king of Israel just died. Slaughtered so cheaply. And, and <laughs> do not tell it to the daughters of, of the, the Philistines. Philistines. Mm. Now, if you tell this to the daughters of the Philistines, things, well, if they we cannot conquer you, if they cannot conquer us with their giants, the if they cannot conquer us with their giants mm. because with of their, their strength, mm. they'll conquer us mm. with the women, mm. understanding the weakness. Mm. Thank you mm. so much, Saz. You see, Apostle is almost preaching, but then. <laughs> Awesome. Now, the next that scripture actually got into me. Mm. That explanation got into me mm. and is in me. Awesome. You're not home yet, and you already have all of this up here. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Now, the apostle also talked about um, longevity in ministry, mm. and he said, for the ministry to even last, it has to be that the minister is living. And then he thought about some beautiful things like. Take a stroll, enjoy your walking. Rest. Sometimes, if yeah. you feel the time for walking around is a waste, just pray along while you're walking mm. and what to eat, what not to eat, mm. and at what time. But then there was a statement he said that do not allow yourself to be placed under Xerox by mm. members. Mm. That if you feel too weak, oh, I need a rest now, I have to um, observe a siesta, and then there's this member who's coming, Apostle, please pray for me, and you feel you are exhausted. That you should recommend another pastor for the other person so what do you think of that statement what if you are just the only hope as a matter of fact the last option 
the only option for that person and now they're so tired now the apostle has thought that you recommend another person another pastor for that mm. um for the council or what so, of you what do you think of that um i think he, he mentioned all that when it was when he touched the points that has to do with health mm. on that longevity in ministry yeah. 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 and was dwelling on health mm. and um spoke about the diet of the minister uh, the bodily exercise and so on now coming to the question that you talked about uh what he's trying to make us and what what I, what I felt he was trying to make us understand is not building the attention of the people around yourself mm. making them understand that it's not all about you but all about God mm. and if God can actually use you for that person the same God can use the person. next person mm. that you are referring that person to mm. Mm. sincerely he gave an illustration about uh, how uh, Mama put to bed and um, met, he met somebody on the a way, member, or yeah. a member on the way, <laughs> who uh, had somebody uh, at the hospital, yeah. Yeah. and um, they had somebody at the hospital, and um, the person told him, forget about your wife, God will take care <laughs> of, of that come with me i don't know if you understand <laughs> yeah, me. No. Since there are members that don't care if you're dying yeah. mm. because if you actually die if they lose you they have an alternative mm. yes so so what you said. are gone your ministry is on the line i i really i am actually i was actually guilty of what he spoke about mm. but i learned my lesson from that apostle white what, what would yeah, you what do you say to that you know, uh, uh, Apostle uh, dwelt uh, more on health is wealth. Mm. That's where he says something about health is wealth. Mm. And, you know, before you get the wealth, you have to be alive. You mm. don't just push you in yeah. ministry like yeah. that. Because uh, otherwise, you're going to be like a flash on the path. Mm. And then you just you pass out. Mm. So the best thing for you to do is to take your rest. And then know that ministry you don't have to carry it. On the path. Because there was a, an instance he gave about a certain minister that, that died around this zone i wouldn't mm. know maybe out here and then the next uh, as they left the the, the burial ground and I, as he was coming back to his office he met the members of the of the church <laughs> in his office and he said ah but why are you not at the cymmetry mm. and they said ah no, uh, uh, person where they don't die. Thank you so much. Yeah. Then before we continue, they are ready for us in the church auditorium. So right. let's hear from them now. Peter, talk to us. Okay, I think the audio is still not good yet. We may have to do with just the studio session. Um, one outstanding thing that I also observed, you know, during the conference um, was I observed that the, 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 the conference, you know, was like an harvest of testimonies. Yes. If you observe, there were so much testimonies. Like an hour plus for testimonies. I, almost, I mean, like, tonight only we had almost an hour long testimony sharing. Yeah. I mean, it was like, what is going on? To me, I, I consider this an harvest. This event is like an harvest of testimonies. Apostle Wet, so let, let, me, let me throw that to you. What do you how, how do you see that? In fact, Papa, Papa made a statement. He said, uh, we had 24 testimonies, you know, testifiers. Awesome. 24. <laughs> and then, uh, as he was saying that, I just heard, you know, in my spirit, mm. he said, a time is going to come when Papa will be holding programs, you know, a program like testimony. Mm, mm, testimony. And the mm. Papa will just come in to give words of, you know, exhortation. Mm. And then... That's the end. And then that's the end. Wow. You wow. see? Now, because uh, people have started to, you know, believe and enjoy the ministrations of the man of God. And mm. they have, you know, begun to see results. Mm. So now they can't keep it to themselves anymore. Mm. You know, especially people that are coming from other denominations. You mm. know, mm. they were there. And then standing on the line, I was amazed. I mean, a lot of people, they, they wanted to say something. And then Papa always tell them, just continue. You know, they should say something. Yeah. So 
it's not it's just like an avalanche of you know testimonies and oh, people so, were oh, ready so. to oh, you know so. to, to say what god has done for them like oh i slept i wake up which no and you testimony. Testimony. No, like the one was telling of us about before the the, the, the guy who lost his yes. uh, ligament yeah. The, yeah. the the guy who was, was unconscious crying. okay tell us about crying. that did, did the, you the man from togo hmm. uh, you know, when we're talking about these testimonies, they are not just coming from ordinary members. These are from ministers, ministers. of the gospel. Oh, yeah. And tangible testimonies. Mm. Like uh, the man from Togo who was involved in an accident. From what I heard from that testimony is that the man practically died. Mm. He was gone, but the Lord brought him back to mm. life. And it was after Papa spoke, after he got back his consciousness, and he was on the bed and he said he wanted to go urinate he and wanted then, to go ease himself and then realized, uh, and he realized that he couldn't stand up he mm. couldn't move mm. somebody had to assist him to move him to the restroom and move them back to the bed mm. and with that little strength he was able to call papa mm. and tried did his best to kneel down in his tradition mm. of talking with the apostle on phone mm. just like that but and while he was on his knees to stand up was also a problem the person mm. moved him up as well and papa spoke a word over his life mm. and as soon as papa was done talking to him and papa prayed for him mm. he started walking mm. but his pelvic bones were still dislocated because i think he went to uh he went he was moved to another he had to move to another hospital and he drove himself <laughs> they did an x-ray and discovered that his pelvic With bones, dislocated four pelvic, pelvic bones were actually was actually were actually dislocated. No, now, if four pelvic bones are hmm. dislocated, how was he able to walk? That was supernatural. That was, that was, that was a miracle. And if the four pelvic bones are dislocated, mm -hmm. how come it did not affect the spinal the cord? cord. Mm. Mm. Because there's actually. They, they, I think about they, uh, if the four pelvic bones are actually dislocated, that is what holds the, the spine. spine. Mm. Obviously, that is what connects the upper body mm. to the lower body. Mm. Because in, I, I think in medicine there's something called the human and uh, the human uh, anatomy. anatomy yeah. And we have the micro anatomy and the macro anatomy. Mm. The micro anatomy are the invisible organs mm. of the human body, mm. like the intestines, the heart. Mm. Now, the macro anatomy are the visible organs of the human body. Mm. Now, now, the connection between mm. the lower part of the macro anatomy and the, uh, the lower part and the, and the upper part mm. are those pelvic bones, mm. the four pelvic bones mm. connecting his feet. Wow to his upper body and mm. yet if they were dislocated disjointed he was able to still walk and he drove to the hospital he drove to the hospital and doctor asked him how <laughs> you're not supposed to be moving and he would drink water where he was not supposed yes. to drink water he drank yes mm. when he was not supposed to drink water because at that event it is obvious there's internal bleeding mm. with such magnitude of an accident mm. he must have had internal bleeding and Hmm. The, uh, once a, 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 a person had a person uh, actually uh, is involved in an accident, there's a, there's internal, internal bleeding, bleeding. There's tendency of coagulation of blood. Mm, that's right. Did and you when <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just saying, and, and that possibility <laughs> was something else because that you you were explaining something about that the yes, other time. Coagulation of hmm. blood, and when the blood is coagulated, it cannot flow. Hmm. So drinking water at that time, it will shut all the nerves. Mm. No, number one, the nerves will be shot, the pulmonary veins and the arteries will definitely be shot. Mm. And if those veins are shot, there's no transportation of blood to the brain. Awesome. And if it's just water that is coming to the brain, there's an explosion. There's always an explosion of nerves. And the person dies instantly, instantly. Mm. that is why when a person is involved in an accident you are asked not to give the person water, water. at that moment mm. but he took water and he was passing out thick blood wow. thick blood the reverse of, that, the the reverse mm. of medical expectations mm. Wow. Mm. and he survived yeah. that awesome. is a miracle awesome. yes that's a miracle and um, please we want to you know this word uh, ministers without blemish is strictly by registration when you have to 
be able to gain access to the auditorium only with your tax. Now, the apostle gives this order that stream it live, Facebook audience, YouTube audience, TV audience as well. Mm. Meanwhile, people leave their residence, come here and pay a little amount of money to gain access to the hall. And now we are asking, or some places are wondering, what makes a difference if you are not going to keep this thing to yourself? Why make some people register and then let others have free access, even at the comfort of their homes, to this um, conference? So, what do you think? Why should there be registration or why should there be streaming to audiences who are not registered? Okay, there is a say that who no go, no, no. Mm. <laughs> it is better you are there than you are told. If you if you understand the the the, the, the media world, the cameras will only give you a section, the area of focus mm -hmm. of the camera, see. what they want you to see. But if you are at the venue, at the venue, mm. you're seeing everything, mm. experiencing everything. So the different kind of you're experience. You're not experiencing the grace from afar. Mm. It's coming to you directly. Mm. The teaching you are receiving it directly. So it's better you are there than mm. you're watching on mm. TV. Mm. Another type of um, miracle and testimony that you know we experienced during this conference was a creative miracle of a man who you know had a short leg. And uh, yes. you know, and it was present at the particular crusade that Papa was ministering. I mean, that I've heard of that testimony, but I have not seen that guy, that pastor. I mean, is even a pastor, not just an ordinary person. You know, I've not I've not seen the man testify directly. When I heard, I watched that testimony. Man, I knew this is nothing but God. Apostle, well, tell us what 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 do you make of that? Of that of that testimony. Of that testimony. Yeah. That, that is creative miracle. Mm. Yeah, there is creative miracle. When uh, when a man that is gifted and, and when a man that is graced like a, a apostle, like a mm. father in the Lord, mm. is on stage, I mean, you should know something extraordinary should take place. Mm. It's like heaven coming down to earth. Mm. And then if you are in that place, I mean, your life will be affected. So the leg growing out, like in that Susa, Asusa, you know, you, you hear things like that, you know, teeth, you know, somebody that had no, you know, teeth, and mm. something just comes out. Okay, Papa made a statement, he said something like um, uh, a, a man with a plastic uh, See, teeth, yeah. you know, after prayers, the thing just, you know, became a real Another creative teeth. miracle. Do you understand? So solid miracles uh, are real, mm. and when you see that happen live and direct, I mean, you are, you are impressed and then you'll be, you'll be touched. Mm. Yeah. So what do Apostle Tanebe tell us? You know, a lot of people still doubt some of these things. You know, with all these things happening right, you know, before our very eyes, what do you have to say to cynics or possibly pessimists who feel some of these things are, you know, gimmicks that have been made up? <laughs> like um, the Apostle would say, mm -hmm. if you think the blind eyes that God opened mm. is not real, mm bring the one you know mm. if you think is arranged i think that there, there should be a blind man around mm. your environment mm. bring the notable blind man mm. to the scene mm. and let's practicalize mm. but then yes. i i think that there's no way there won't be gimmicks even like the apostle preached during was it um longevity in ministry yeah he said um there are gimmicks in the in the uh, prophetic ministries especially that we can't really do without them but anyway he urged that since there are real miracles we just adhere and wait on god for the reality of his power rather than mm. performing absolutely yeah. it's practically supernatural resident in the natural mm. and that is whom the apostle our father mm. is Yes. All right. Sure. Thank you so much, Apostles, for coming. Thank you. We so much appreciate you. Now, that's going to be the end of the review today in our Geodo State Nigeria Celebration TV studio. Exactly. And it's the end, and it's goodbye from us. Meanwhile, it has been the review of the grand finale of Ministers We Are Blemish, October edition for the year 2018. And I am Oboze Geruth. And just in case he doubled as an anchor today, is actually our station manager. <laughs> I'm Femi Marks. Thanks for watching Celebration TV. Mm -hmm. We love you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for coming. The first thing a minister must not possess is spiritual blindness.
this thing you carry, you can produce more than I got. The inner man must desire the outer.